All right, welcome to Ducks and Pucks. Uh, this is a special edition that we're going to do. It's uh, myself, Mike Walters, along with Eddie Jones, and also another one of our writers, Adam Bess. Uh, welcome to the show, Adam. Hey, good to be here. So we had a crazy day today, Eddie. Uh, it looked like nothing was going to happen up to the final minute, and uh, my reverse psychology worked. Uh, for those <laughs> of you who saw my, uh, my tweet out there saying nothing was going to happen, and all of a sudden it all happened, but... Uh, Let's go over the trades. Uh, you know, the first one that came out. Uh, what do you think about this uh, Lovejoy trade uh, with him going back to uh, Pittsburgh, Eddie? Um, I actually really like this trade. You know, a lot of people, when it first got announced, uh, you know, they haven't really seen a lot of Dupre, which is understandable <clears throat> with, you know, most of, most of the fans uh, not following Pittsburgh. Uh, but, you know, he, he's a really good young defenseman. Um, I heard a lot of the guys on TSN kind of, you know, downplaying the fact uh, that, you know, that he doesn't really have a ton of potential. Um, I, I think he actually has a, a ton of upside. And, you know, we, we needed a right-handed guy. And when this first came out, you know, this uh, – I thought this might be the only day we uh, deal we do all day. You know, Dupre being a lefty and Lovejoy being a righty, kind of giving it up. But, uh, you know, he's uh, fourth in the NHL for defensemen and hits. You know, still, still has 19 points – or, sorry, 17 points in the season, which – you know, for for a guy that can hit that much, you really don't see that that often. You know, he blocks shots, I and mean, he's just he's got a lot of potential. You know, it kind of makes our defense a, a little bit younger. Obviously, he's 23 and Lovejoy was 31, but uh, I think uh, it's definitely an improvement on on, on Lovejoy. And Adam, what uh, what do you think? You like this move too, as well, with uh, Lovejoy going back to Pittsburgh? Uh, you know, I think it's not a bad fit. I was a little surprised because I think this came out after the Penguins picked up Cole already, which is another righty. So then picking up Lovejoy, um, I don't see, when I first heard of this trade, I thought that Anaheim must have given up a pick or something as well, because this just, I don't see from the Penguin side how this makes any sense. And therefore, as an Anaheim fan, I think it's just great. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think part of it, you know, might have been a familiarity uh, with Pittsburgh, Eddie. Maybe, you know, they knew what they're getting with Lovejoy and wanted him back and Maybe that's what they were kind of looking at, or what do you think? Yeah, that's why I was was surprised by it is, is they let him go initially, and and um, I really can't remember what we gave up for him. I'd have to to look at it, but yeah, when I first saw um, you know Lovejoy had been traded, we didn't know for who, um, and then it, you know then they announced it's for Dupre, and then like Adam <laughs> said, I was waiting for you know a pick, a third, a second, something going back the other way, um, that that added to the deal for Pittsburgh, and and then you know it gets confirmed as Lovejoy for Dupre, and. A lot of Pittsburgh fans a little bit angry, thinking that we robbed him. And you know, I'm definitely happy being on the other end of it. I, I think it's a great deal for the Ducks. Uh, you know, adds some youth to our already young defense, and you know, it, it get it brings in that, you know, that uh, that physical guy. You know, losing um, Smith Pelly up front. I know he's he's a hitter for a guy like Sekatch, bringing in Fleischman. So making our, our forwards more creative. It's nice to get some, you know, some toughness and some steel back on on defense. Yeah, you know, after this trade uh, went down, I mean, obviously we have more uh, d defensive men and other things to talk about in the shakeup, but after this one went down, my first thought was, okay, who's going to go with Fowler now? Now that Lovejoy's gone, how is that going to work out, Eddie? I mean, obviously we can talk about it with the other trades, but, um, you know, that that was kind of one little worry I have. Don't get me wrong, I agree on this trade. It just kind of made me wonder, you know, what, what's up for uh, Fowler's pairing now? Uh, you know, especially with, with Batten now, too. Uh, that would give us, like, how many lefties right now? Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, too many. Yeah, definitely too many because you think uh, it's what was Nooski, Votnin, and, and um, Holzer and Manson now, and you don't really see any roster spots for Holzer and Manson. Not when everyone's healthy, no. Yeah, and, and you know, when you look at um, who's going to, you know, fill out, we're going to look at that a bit later, too, obviously. Uh, Holtz are coming in too, and 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 Dupre was new ski, and, and you know a lot of the guys already have in the lineup. It kind of creates some some lineup issues. Uh, Mike, you know, with the uh, the was new ski trade is a little bit surprising, I think, for everybody. Obviously, being after the deadline, a lot of people giving up. Uh, even after the Lovejoy trade, a lot of people thinking that that might not be enough. And then this is huge trade gets announced. Uh, you know, was new ski uh, a third? <laughs> everybody happy with Rene Bort going back the other way. Uh, 2015 second and, and William Carlson going uh, going back to the Blue Jackets. What did you think uh, of this trade and, and how does it, you know, prepare the Ducks for a deep uh, playoff run? Oh, uh, when this one came out, Eddie. I mean, you know, I was madly writing about the Lovejoy one, trying to get everything out on that one. And when this one came out, I was ecstatic. You know, uh, 
Wisniewski, I always liked him when he was on the Ducks before. You know, he played a couple seasons. Uh, he had uh, 86 games uh, with the Ducks with, uh, you know, four goals and 37 assists over those two years. And then, you know, he left. He's, he's bounced around a few teams. He's been on Columbus uh, for the last four years. But, you know, he brings that physical presence to Eddie that I, I think is another help that we were talking about. Um, and I think kind of like the Lovejoy trade, this is kind of like a familiarity uh, type deal. You know, the Ducks are familiar with Wisniewski. They know what they're getting. And uh, the big positive was dumping Bork. You know, we, we talked about Bork and, and his, his lack of success. And I talked about that with the Montreal guys as well. Um, you know, I, I didn't want to see Carlson go, but, you know, we talked about this too. And uh, sometimes you got to give a little to get a little. And I think this is a fantastic trade. Yeah, and and uh, Adam, you look at the the return, um, or what we ended up giving uh, Columbus in return for Wisniewski. Do you feel you know it's a fair deal? We came out the winners, and obviously losing Carlson and going the other way. Uh, how do you feel? You know the deal panned out. Yeah, I I think uh, I think it's a good deal. I mean, yeah, we gave up a second round pick. I mean, you know, you don't always want to give up uh, high picks, but I think uh, Wisniewski is well worth it. I think he's going to help us out in the blue line. Uh, and I think, uh, like we said, getting getting Bork out of there cleared out uh, that mess. Um, so I think that's going to help. And, you know, we can talk about, uh, obviously, back, how we backfilled on Carlson's end on the other trades. But, uh, Adam, what did you think about this trade with uh, Wisniewski coming back? Uh, you know, I don't remember a ton about Wisniewski other than I know he can check pretty hard. I, I always figured that, I mean, as soon as I heard this trade is coming out, I, all I knew was Bork was gone, too, and I figured that we would have given up, like, a first or something for that. Uh, to hear that it was just a second was pretty good. Like you guys were saying with Carlson, you know, it sucks that he was gone, but, you know, we'll get to it later with another trade. We kind of filled that gap. Um, overall, I think this is a really good trade, and because that familiarity with Wisniewski, you know, this is going to be – this is going to help in the playoffs more than anything. Yeah, and you know, you look at what type of defenseman Wisniewski is, and you know, he he he's a he's a decently physical guy for his size at five eleven. But you know, the big I think one of the big reasons he's been brought in is is his prowess on the power play, and you know what he's going to add to a, a pretty bad power play in Anaheim, which is you know surprising with some of the guys we have that you would think you know Fowler, Vaughn, and Lindholm that would be you know really good power plays, and you know based on where the Ducks are in the standings too, you would. You'd expect them to have a better power play, uh, but I think that that's the big add-on that Wisniewski can come in and, and give us is you know give a spark to that power play and, and you know, hopefully get it going. Yeah, I agree, Eddie. I think back then, you know, that that was kind of his role then, and I think he's going to probably fill that role for a little bit until you know Botnan comes back. We know he's he's due back before the playoffs, obviously, but he's still going to be out for several weeks. So I think we can definitely look to see him on the power play, uh, probably shorthanded too as well. Um, you know, and he's familiar with the system at Anaheim too. So I, I know he's going to pick it up, you know, quick. So that's why I, well, after this move, I was like super happy and I thought, okay, we got two moves, you know, we're done. And then, you know, here we go, bam, a third move. And, uh, you know, in this one, the ducks, uh, get rid of Brewer, which, you know, I know, uh, uh Adam, you probably heard, uh, Eddie and I, that's another one of our favorites. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. we pick, pick up Holzer. And uh, what did you think about this one, Eddie? I mean, it looks like a similar, you know, uh, Murray's clearing out the, the dead wood, so to speak, and, and bringing in stronger defense. Yeah, I know. I, I really don't really ca uh, care that much for Holzer. I know I've watched him a lot play for the Leafs, and, and I don't think that's, you know, the big thing in the seal. I think the big thing is, is getting rid of Brewer. And, you know, obviously he only had one year left, so it's not like it's a big deal, but you know, just getting rid of that contract and, you know, the negativity with the fans surrounding Brewer and everything and, uh, bringing in another right-handed uh, a shot, which I think is is significant after you know Lovejoy obviously going in, and, and Dupre coming in and you know having more lefties and righties and and you know it's not like Holter is gonna play any significant time, if any, for for the Ducks, but just having you know that option to bring up another right-handed guy alongside uh, Manson is, is gonna be good for the Ducks. You know he's a he's a more defensive guy, uh, you know similar to Dupre in a way. Uh, a little bit less puck handling skill. He's only got six assists for the Leafs this year, uh, but he's got 117 hits, so he's a hitter and he, he's going to get down on the battles. And you know, these these are the types of guys we needed. You know, to pray, hold to you know, round up the lineup and you know make us a little bit more physical on the back end. And what do you think, Adam? As far as you know, us adding to the blue line, you you think we've done uh, pretty well? You know, in these uh, three trades here. 
I think this is about catching up with some other teams in the West. I mean, start looking all the way back to when uh, Winnipeg made that trade for Tyler Myers, you know, and that's what really set it off. And then um, with some other trades, I know St. Louis uh, picked up McCulloch and somebody else. Uh, LA had uh, Sakara as well. That was one for sure. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and um, even even like Minnesota picking up Leopold, and I know like they're not locked for the playoffs or anything, but this is just about not just uh, bolstering our defense, but also playing catch up almost with some of the uh, teams in the other conference or the other division rather. Yeah, I agree with you on that, Adam. I think you know we talked about Eddie and I talked about this before too. Uh, you look at the other move uh, was uh, for Nashville, you know, with uh, Seth Jones over there, Weber uh, getting Franzen. Um, you know, that team is the team that Eddie and I talked about as the team to beat, um, you know, in the Western Conference. But, uh, you know, Eddie, with this addition now, I think the Ducks are the team to beat. And I'm not just saying that because, you know, obviously we're Ducks fans. But, I mean, you look at the Ducks blue line now, and, I mean, I'm very ecstatic and excited going in this final five, six weeks. Yeah, I know. Obviously, that's where we need to improve. And, you know, you look at the additions, too, of Sekach and, and Fleischman. And you look at the, the forward depths we have. And you know, we're going to talk about it a little bit later when we talk about the rosters. But uh, with uh, Boleski being injured and, you know, Edom is solidifying that third-line role right now. When uh, Boleski becomes healthy again, we're going to have uh, – you know, it's an issue. But it, it's not always a bad issue to have when you have so many forwards who can – you know, who, who, who deserve to play in the lineup, um, and you have to decide who to play with. I think we boast uh, one of the best uh, depths in forward, uh, you know, if not in the Western Conference, uh, in the league as well. And then you look on, the, um, you know, the back end is where we needed to really improve, and we picked up uh, Wisniewski, a good right-handed power play guy, and then, you know, Dupre and Holzer as well. That definitely improves our chances uh, to you know, get to the, uh, the Stanley Cup Finals. I, I think that puts us just above Nashville as favorites in the West for sure. Yeah, you know, uh, we just uh, in the last article I put out, I, I combined the last two uh, trades just because I had too much going on over here, you know, kind of blowing up in my office trying to get everything down. But uh, I put that poll up to see uh, what the fans thought about if the Ducks would go, uh, you know, in the first or second round or the conference finals or if they get to the Stanley Cup. And, uh, you know, overwhelmingly the votes, it's it's almost 90 percent that the Ducks will make the Stanley Cup is, is what people are thinking now after these moves. Uh, what do you think about that, Adam? You think we have a really good chance now to, to at least get to the finals? Now we do. Um, I mean, this is the way I look at it. Yesterday, if the playoffs had started yesterday and we had a forward injury, anybody, our call-up would be Renee Bork. And, I mean, I don't even need to explain how bad that would be. Now, you know, we have an injury in the playoffs come up then. We can call up Edom. Uh, we could call up Wagner. And to me, that's just that just shows the resilience um, that the team has shown lately. Hey, Eddie, uh, as far as uh, the last trade, uh, that was uh, basically a fill-in uh, right there at the end for uh, Carlson, uh, you know, also sending uh, Matt Clark to Colorado. Uh, what did you think about that minor league deal? Yeah, it's really, like you said, it's just a, a fill-in for um... – for Carlson, you know, we we brought in a lot of the defensemen and you know Holzer, Dupre, and Wisniewski, and you know more so Wisniewski being, uh, you know, swapped for a forward essentially with Carlson, and then Colts, uh, Holzer coming in for uh, Brewer. We needed to add back into our, our center depth, and you know, giving up Matt Clark for Scarbosa <clears throat> isn't a big deal. And like like you said, it just adds to our depth at center, replaces Carlson in, in the depth charts, and. Uh, you know, maybe he'll eventually crack the lineup, but, you know, he's got a long way to go, too, just like Carlson did, you know, in front of guys like Raquel and uh, Thompson, Kessler, Getzlaff, Wagner now as well. So it's uh, it's just kind of a depth fill to uh, to fill up the, the, the lineup in the AHL. You know, going into uh, tomorrow's game uh, against Arizona, how, how do you think the deep pairings are going to uh, look? You think Wisniewski's going to go in, Dupree, and maybe Holster with, Manson and Stoner, Stoner maybe on the outside there on the on the last uh, bit with you know Botten still out or what do you think for the you know which six guys are going to basically play tomorrow? Um, yeah, it, it's 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 tough to say. Obviously with Botten and out, um, you would hope Wisniewski is going to come in and play, and um, I, I it all depends on how much management uh, uh waits to pray over guys like Stoner and and, and Manson and 
you know, it, it's tough to look at the roster right now, and you, know, you got to remember that uh, Lovejoy is gone and, and Brewer is gone. So you, know, you could probably see uh, Lindholm and Boschman still being together. Uh, you might see uh, uh, Fowler coming in play with, with Newski. I think that's, you know, the, the logical option right now. And then you know, do you see Stoner stay in the lineup? Uh, maybe see Holzer come in for Manson. You know, Manson might stay in and play with Dupre. Uh, personally, I'd like to see Dupre get a start over Stoner. Maybe play with Manson uh, on that last pairing, and or, or give Holzer a chance. Uh, but you know, yeah, realistically, I think Fowler, Wisniewski, uh, Lindholm, and Boschman, and then Dupre, and either uh, Manson or Holzer. Yeah, and what, and what do you think, Adam? As far as the the pairings, you know, it's going to be a little bit crazy. Any uh, thoughts on your end of who will be matched up? Uh, I think actually Stoner is probably going to draw back in. Um, he had his best game against Dallas, and I know that's not saying like a ton, but you know he had that goal, and I don't know if uh, Boudreaux is going to think that that's like an indication of what's to come or anything. I wouldn't mind seeing Dupre uh, draw in for Stoner, but I don't see uh, I don't see Holzer going in for Manson right now. I, I see him as more of like a, a depth kind of guy for right now. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I I don't know if Holzer will go in there. I think Dupre and Wisniewski will probably draw in. So it'll be interesting to see. How I'm going to have to wait for the morning skate to try and figure out the lineups for tomorrow. So it's going to be a little bit uh, uh, crazy tomorrow morning. Um, you know, the other big question out there, uh, Eddie, is uh, Bolesky. You know, we talked about on the last podcast about whether or not they were going to trade him. And the Ducks didn't trade Bolesky, as, you know, we finally um, have found out today. But they also haven't re-signed him. So... What do you think is going to happen? you think uh, now, uh, you know, since our last time we, we went on the air, you think that maybe the Ducks will try and make a deal and keep them? Or you think they'll let them walk, uh, you know, UFA in the summer? Um, you know, it, it's hard to tell because when you look at the lineup right now and, you know, you see a lot of guys who, who really can't be moved out of the lineup. Obviously, Jackman's hurt. But even if he is there, you know, he's a guy who can be scratched. And, you know, Raquel's not going to be sent down as being, you know, he's going to be staying up because he's a center. And then, you look at but anybody else can be sent down. Well, Edom could be sent down, and you know he's the most logical one. If if is going to come back in and play, which he you know he most likely is going to come back into play. Um, signing him, I have no idea. Um, obviously, they're still working on the numbers. They must be close, or they believe they need Bolesky for the Cup run, which I I think both could easily be possibilities. But when you look at the lineup right now, uh, Fleischman didn't play last game, and you know he's most likely going to check in. And, um, and coming in, and you know, Paul Mary was playing on that top line with uh, with Getzlaff and Perry, and you know, he's mostly a right wing. So you you could see something uh, like Fleischman, you know, checking in on that first line, <clears throat> keeping Cogliano, uh, Kessler, and Silverberg together. Um, then you've got uh, Sakatch, Raquel, and Edom who played so well together. Um, and then Maroon and Thompson, and, and then the problem is, do you really want to put a guy like Palmieri on on the fourth line? So maybe you put him on the third line where Edom was, but you know that line is playing so so good together. So I'm just glad I'm not Bruce Boudreau and I have to to make these decisions. But you know they're not they're tough decisions, but they're not bad decisions. You know these are guys who who deserve to not be playing on the fourth line, and I'm sure they'll get more minutes than a regular fourth line. But it, it's definitely going to be a tough decision for Boudreau to make uh, come game time. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it is going to be tough. Uh, what do you think about the offensive lines, Adam, as far as, you know, moving forward? Uh, you know, obviously, once the get gets back, but also with uh, Sekatch and Fletchman in there. Uh, well, I don't know. I've, I've been reading up trying to find out more about Jackman's injury. Um, with him out, and they sent him home, so it must be out for a considerable amount of time. That could kind of change it up from having, I mean, you know, obviously our first line is an offensive force. Our second line now, uh, it's kind of a shutdown line more than anything. Um, you know, then that third line, the youngster line, that's another scoring line. But our our last line usually is more of a checking line. But with, uh, with Jackman out, I don't know. I mean, we've seen Thompson show flashes of offensive skill. I don't know if we could kind of try to make an offensive line out of that for a little bit until we get... Big guys, Bolesky, Maroon, um, Jackman back. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be the issue. Uh, you know, I'm looking right now trying to find more info on Jackman. I know it's a lower body injury, and obviously he was out, you know, in that Dallas game and didn't come back. Um, so that's going to be something to figure out. I, I think um, 
I think the key, as you hit on it, Eddie, is really the second and third line. Uh, I think uh, Cogliano, Kessler, and Silverberg is is a good second line, and Setcatch, Raquel, and Edom is a good third line as well. I, I, I wouldn't change those lines if I was Bruce. Um, you know, I think it's going to be that first and fourth line is what we're going to have to try and figure out. Uh, you know, I don't know if, um, you know, you want to bump Paul Mary to the fourth line or put Fleshman on the fourth line with Jackman out. You know, I don't know. It is a tough decision, but, I mean, I guess the good thing is there are options, Eddie. Yeah, and, you know, with um, with everybody healthy, eventually we're going to have everybody healthy. Um, what do you – I'm going to ask you, Mike, first, and then, you know, then I'll ask Adam the same question. Uh, with everybody healthy, what – is your ideal lineup for the forwards? And, you know, obviously two guys are going to have to sit or, or get sent down. And then for, uh, for the defense, what are you, what's your ideal lineup when everybody's healthy? Uh, for my, you know, what I think if they were all healthy, um, I would go with Paul Mary still on the top line with Getzloff and Perry. Uh, as of right now, uh, I would leave uh, Cogliano, Kessler, and Silverberg on the second line and uh, Sekatch, Raquel, and Edom on the third line. Uh, the only change I, I could see maybe is if Boudreaux wants to bump Sekatch up to the first line and then, you know, switch him with Palmieri, maybe. Uh, otherwise, I'd keep those lines at, like that. And then the fourth line, um, it's probably going to be Maroon, Thompson, and Fletchman. That's that's kind of the way I would I would see that line going, um, moving, moving forward, uh, splitting time between probably Fletchman and, and Jackman. <clears throat> Um, if that, you know, Eden Raquel and Sackatch line uh, keeps uh, playing well like they have these last couple games. All right, and, and Adam, what, what do you see when, you know, with everybody healthy, so including, you know, Bolesky being back and if Jackman was back, what, what would be your ideal lineup uh, for the Ducks going forward? Uh, actually, I agree with those lineups unless I would like to see Fleischman play with uh, Getzloff and Perry at least. At least twice, I'd say. Give him, you know, a couple games. Give him, like, a heat really kind see. of tryout up on the first line. Yeah, I would like to see that. I mean, or or even, like, a pinner kind of tryout, you know, if you want to go back to last year. He, uh, just by watching a couple, I don't watch the Panthers much, but by watching uh, other Eastern Conference teams, Clashman does remind me of, of Penner in a lot of ways. Um, he's definitely not as, as hard a hitter or anything, but he's. I think he could definitely complement the uh, the top line. But if he doesn't, I do think that he could sub in with Jackman on the fourth line pretty good, depending on you know what kind of game we're looking to play and what kind of lines we're looking to roll. Yeah, yeah, I definitely think that you know that's an option, and it's going to be tough for for Bruce coming up for sure. Uh, you know, obviously, you know he's got a, a little bit of history with Fleischman, so we're, we're most likely going to see. Uh, a little bit of a, of a trial for him on, on hopefully the first line or maybe second, third line. And, you know, when Bolesky gets back and, you know, uh, you know Jackman gets back, it's going to make a, a, a tough line of just, uh, decision for, for sure. Uh, Mike, who do you see uh, when everybody's healthy, you know, Vaughn and then lining up on, on defense for the Ducks? Yeah, we talked about this a little bit. Uh, the way I would go uh, for my, my D pairing would be uh, Fowler and Wisniewski. Um, I would keep Hampus and uh, Bosch together, and then uh, Votnin and probably uh, Dupree. I'd probably throw him in there. Um, you know, um, I like Manson, too, of course. Uh, that's another option to rotate probably between those two. Um, I, I don't know how Stoner and Alliser, um fit in this. Uh, you know, I, it's going to be interesting to see because now we've got so many options on defense. But I, I really think uh, that's going to be the the. the end. Part. There's Hallister, Manson, and Stoner. Those those guys are probably going to be fighting it out for probably, you know, right now they're probably two of the three will get to play. But when Botman's back, I, you know, I only see one of those three really playing. I, I don't see the Ducks uh, benching Dupree and Wisniewski. Yeah, I, I think that's a pretty fair assessment. Uh, Adam, what, what do you think? The, how, how would you like the the defense to line up for the Ducks? Uh, in a healthy scenario. Yeah. Um. I mean, obviously, you got your keepers, Fowler, Boschman, Lindholm, Wisniewski, uh, Batnin. I agree. I would not want to see Dupre um, out of the lineup unless it was an injury or anything like that. Um, and then, honestly, Holzer, I'm not entirely sure where he fits into our plan. I mean, I don't know that that much about him at all. I know he's right-handed shot, and I know that he did he did not make the opening night roster for the Leafs. Um, I could see him really as depth, 
but I would definitely like to see Dupre played over like Stoner, and I guess ultimately Stoner played over uh, Holzer unless he surprises somebody, you know, until Vatnin comes back. What's your take, Eddie? Uh, yeah, I, I think that's a pretty good assessment. You know, I, I saw the uh, hero charts, um, you know, circling around. It's something new to me that I've, I you know, don't really know too much about, but, you know, they, they kind of rate, uh, you know, forwards, uh, you know, top four, bottom pairing, and top pairing uh, based on you know, a couple of anal- analytics, time on ice, you know, points and everything. You know, and I agree with you guys on, on Dupre. You know, he's, he's ranked in, you know, top pairing for three categories and then top four for another two, so... Uh, and uh, you know he's only been playing bottom pairing ice time, so maybe he, if he ends up playing a little bit more ice time with the Ducks, uh, you know, it might just be what he needs. And uh, you know I definitely love to see him play. Uh, for the pairings, I'm not too sure. You know obviously we'd like to keep uh, Lindholm with Boschman. It seems to be working. Maybe put uh, Fowler with with Newski, and then when Vodnin comes back, uh, you know play Dupre with Vodnin. I I think that's uh, a lot better than it was looking you know, a couple of days ago. Yeah, definitely, Eddie. I mean the defense. You know, going forward, looking uh, to the playoffs, I think the defense is – I really don't think the blue line is going to be an issue for the Ducks uh, as far as uh, can they, you know, do what they need to do and play solid. I, I think that's not going to be the issue. I think the issue is just going to be, you know, who we're going to figure out is that sixth D-man. Uh, I think uh, the options are good. Obviously, in goal, I think we're fine. Uh, Gibson has been lighting it up, especially if you saw that second period against Dallas. I mean – he only let in one goal. I mean, I, but Dallas could have scored two or three, four goals in that period. So I, I think uh, Gibson and Anderson are good. You know, the only question I have left, uh, I guess uh, I'll go with Eddie first on this one, is really going to be the first line. Um, after we traded Pinner last season, we had that problem with the first line. We had Tay Mussolini on the first line. We had Paul Mary. We had Silverberg, uh, Maroon. You know, I think we had every forward on the team on that line. Uh, and then ultimately we went with DSP, you know, for a majority of the playoffs. Uh, if we're to pick one person and get somebody on there, who would you like to see with the Twins, Eddie? Well, you know, right now it's a little bit tough. Um, you know, like we've kind of mentioned, I'd like to see Fleischman uh, get a chance on that top line. You know, if he plays really well, then him. But, you know, all season it's really been Palmieri, Maroon, Bolesky, uh, DSP. You know, it's been a bunch of guys on that top line. Eat him occasionally, but, you know, I think uh, – that second line is really good. Uh, I like to keep that together. You know, if we can keep that young line together, then you know that's pretty good as well. Uh, you know, you don't maybe, you know, if Fleischman doesn't work out, maybe Maroon jumps back up. When Valeski's healthy, maybe he comes back up. Maybe Palmieri stays there. Um, you know, right now, I, I really don't know. I think, uh, you know, if uh, I could probably better answer that question well, after Fleischman's played, you know, a couple games on that top line, and you know, hopefully he solidifies that role because. I know it, it's been a while since we have a guy on there. You know, hopefully, I mean, in the future, in a couple of years, we got Nick Ritchie on that line. But right now, it's you know the revolving door on left wing continues. So. Yeah, and what what do you think, Adam? Is there anybody that you would? Uh, I know you mentioned Fletchman too to try uh, on there. Is there anybody else that you would try on that uh, first line? You know, in the next couple of weeks before the playoffs. I just think it's a shame that we we traded away Bork. I mean, like you know how well he fit on that line. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, and the All Star, yeah. Uh, seriously though, um, like I said, Fleischman, yeah, I agree with your assessment. Fleischman should get a, at least a little bit of try out there, more than one game, in order to see if he fits. But uh, all throughout this season and and last season, I mean, I know they rode DSP on that line a lot. Um, Bolesky played on that line, but that was a lot more when when Perry was injured. I don't know how that line would react, like all three of them healthy at the same time. I imagine it would be pretty good. But I like – one thing I've always liked about Boudreaux is that he plays the hot hand, and most of the time that pans out. And now that he has so many options, I think I think that really fits his system well. And I think uh, Bob Murray's done a really good job of finding enough players uh, of the high enough skill to fit into Boudreaux's system there. Yeah, I definitely agree with you on that. I, I think uh, it is going to be still a trial out, you know, process for a little bit. I might, you know, even like uh, Sekatch on there for a little bit too to see how he does. You know, try the two new guys on there, see how they do, and then uh, if it doesn't quite work out, then maybe go, you know, after that, maybe go back to Palmieri or Maroon. But that, that's kind of where I'm leaning, Eddie. And, uh, I mean, like you said, it is a tough decision now. And, I mean, we're just going to have to see how this lineup shakes out over this, uh, you know, we got th- three uh, – 
Yeah, we got Arizona tomorrow, and then uh, the big games against Montreal and Pittsburgh this week. I mean, it's going to be really interesting to see how we do, um, you know, over the next uh, four or five days, Eddie. Yeah, I know. We we talked about the the review and how they're going to be a lot harder in the games, and you know, these trades make those games definitely a lot more interesting. Obviously, we still should be winning that. Uh, the game against Arizona, especially now that they've completely dismantled the team and, and basically gone in a tank battle with uh, with Buffalo. So, um, <laughs> but you know Montreal coming up, they've obviously added to their team uh, today, uh, picking up a couple guys to 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 help with their lineup. Petri, who we were rumored to go for, uh, I believe, Toy Mitchell, uh, Brian Flynn from Buffalo, and and a couple other guys, uh, you know, a lower you know fourth line, third line guys to pick up and. And then Pittsburgh come up too. Obviously, uh, you know, re- rematch with uh, Lovejoy already, and you know they picked up a couple guys too. So those are going to be two tough matchups, but it's going to be a real test here, and and, and really interesting to see how the, all these new guys gel together. Yeah, I'm really excited uh, going forward here in the next four or five weeks. Uh, and then you know, just uh, for everybody out there on the podcast, you know, we're going to be doing uh, the ticket giveaways like we talked about for April. The next podcast is when we'll uh, have the details on all of that and whatnot. And uh, we're probably going to do a live show closer to playoff times. I'm working out some details on that uh, with a third party that's helping us out. So look out for that. We'll, um, we we got to do some practice runs, get some things ironed out. Uh, we didn't quite have it ready for today, and uh, I think it would have been crazy anyways. So um, it, it'll work out, though, in the future, and look for that. And uh, thanks for coming on the show, Adam. Thanks and- for having me. You're welcome, and we're going to always try to get some more of the writers on here, too. And uh, let's just go, Ducks, and see how we roll the rest of the week. Thanks for listening. The Anaheim Ducks are the Stanley Cup champions.